Kathy here. I'm here in Butler, Indiana, where things are getting really loud and really crazy. I'm here at the International Monster Truck Museum in Hall of Fame. It's a festive day here at the Monster Truck Museum because they just moved to a new location. So of course, they're celebrating the only way that true Monster Truck fans know how. By crushing cars. Now, a few weeks ago, the trucks all paraded down to the new location. They were moving them all to a new permanent space. And the day of our visit was the grand opening. And when we got here, we had no idea just how huge this event was going to be. There were a ton of monster truck fans on hand for the ribbon cutting. This has been a huge dream come true for all you guys that donate time, product, material. Give yourselves a round of applause. As we walked in the front door, we were greeted by something that no one in the crowd expected. Bigfoot One, the original monster truck, towering over everyone as it pounced on a crushed car. It was an astounding sight that we're sure no one in attendance will ever forget. It's Bigfoot right here on a car. Like <laughs> This is unbelievable. The museum was started in 2011 to collect and archive the history of monster trucks and to pay tribute to the pioneers of the sport. It was started by monster truck driver Jeff Cook, AKA Wild Man Jeff. If you're as into the original monster trucks as Ryan is, you'll remember that he drove some of the all-time classics. Jeff Cook was a driver back in the 90s. He used to drive Marty Garza's Overkill for the 93 season. Overkill was an awesome truck. Okay, so here's the deal. The best era for monster trucks was the late 80s and early 90s because there were actually stakes back then. Back then, it was just a bunch of guys with these huge trucks that they poured tens of thousands of dollars, their entire life savings into. And it was a miracle half the time just to bounce the truck over the finish line. And if you crashed, it was, it was like crashing your livelihood. There was no going in the back and fixing it up for the next event. Like that, that could be it for your entire career. So I'm super excited to see some of these trucks that started it all, not knowing you know, if they were even going to be around for the next race. But turns out a lot of them left a legacy that has lasted decades. And you know what? He's right. We've binged plenty of classic 80s races together and they are fascinating. And as you can see, a lot of other people feel the same way. Walking into the museum is like stepping into a living time capsule of the glory days. And on the afternoon of the grand opening, even the displays about great drivers of the past came to life. Ryan obviously was over the moon. And this is what I was talking about in the car, like the real monster truck. So I saw this truck race. This truck was fast. Everything you could ever possibly want to know about the history of monster truck racing is right here. It, like in the flesh, it's not pictures, they're here. For a lot of people, it starts when you're a kid. When I was about four years old, I was flipping through channels and came across the old monster truck challenge show. And pretty soon my mom and dad here were taking me to car crushes. And seeing these classic trucks here at the museum, some of them driven by their original drivers, like Alan Pizzo here, who I met like 30 years ago, is the first time in a long time they've really felt larger than life the way they did when I first discovered them. Even if you've never watched monster trucks before, you gotta come here and see, you know, what they look like, check out the history, check out how big they are in person. It's really cool. And in addition to the retro trucks, there's about a billion pieces of memorabilia inside. A lot of them from Jeff Cook's personal collection that he's lovingly put together since he was just a kid getting into the sport. So to get an inside look at the epicenter of monster truck history, who better to talk to than the museum's president himself? Wild man Jeff Cook agreed to give us a full tour of the new location. So over here's King Kong. We've got Goliath Predator number one, um, Barefoot Taurus Equalizer. Those are all trucks that are very iconic in the industry. 
Jeff told us that he wanted the experience to be an all-encompassing journey through the history of the sport. We start out here kind of in the early days, which would have been in the 80s, early 90s, and kind of what, you know, a lot of memorabilia in the cabinets. We, we try to represent everybody in the industry. I learned that a lot of the early history can be measured in tire size, which I realize now makes a lot of sense. The first biggest tire everybody kind of ran. Bigfoot ended up on a on a cover of a magazine back in the day, and that kind of changed everything. At one point, somebody said, well, what about them 66s? We ought to have them on. Well, then the next step up was a 73-inch tire, wow. and you need to stand beside that so you can see the difference. <laughs> this one? Nope, this one here on shotgun. Oh, my god! So back in the early 80s, if you had the 73s, you had the biggest tire, <laughs> you know, the biggest tire out there. So and this tire roughly weighs about 1,300 pounds. Whoa. So in one oh tire. Oh my gosh. So. That is crazy. <laughs> but it is a big tire. When the sport started, drivers would add enormous tires and as many shocks and lights as possible to create bold, eye-catching machines. But as the years went on and racing became the focus, the tires got smaller again and the trucks got lighter. A truck like Barefoot weighed about 10 to 11,000 pounds. Oh my gosh. This truck only weighed about 7,500 pounds. The more time I spent with Jeff though, the more I was curious about his truck. The one with the 73 inch tires that dwarfed me. It's an old school truck, but it's a new build. So I asked him why he chose to do that. Turns out that truck, Shotgun Harry, was the catalyst for the entire museum. Jeff told me that after a tragic loss of a dear friend, he found himself doing some deep evaluation of his own life and had an important realization. And I realized in my head that what really brought joy to me was not the monster trucks at the current status that they were, but the old back when I was a kid. And yeah. this truck I had actually started building when I was in high school in the 80s. I never wow. finished this truck. It ended up in my grandma's barn oh. in you know a million pieces. It was just all the pieces. Well, when I realized how much joy the old trucks brought to, to me, I said, you know, I think I'm just gonna pull all those parts out and as a hobby, just put it together because I never finished it and it's a, yep. an, a hole in my history. I needed to put it together, yeah, finish my finish so cool. my high school dream. Oh, so, oh so I finished the truck. We had no idea people were gonna love it so much. Pretty soon yeah. I got promoters calling me saying, hey, can you come to a car crush? Yeah, I guess. So I would I started touring it around. After a big show, the owner of the museum's previous location asked him a fateful question. You know, is there any museums for these trucks? And we got talking, I said no. He goes, Well, if you put something together, I'll give you floor space. <laughs> I think it was John Taffer who said that a place can't be something to everybody, but it should be everything to somebody. He was talking about bars, but that sentiment is true here. As you can see, this museum has grown into everything for a lot of somebodies, not least of whom are the members of its hallowed Hall of Fame. It's turned into the most uh, sought after award in the monster truck industry now. So everybody sees it and says, I want to be on that Hall of Fame wall because that means you've made it. Normally, there's a separate event to celebrate each year's new inductees, but since last year's had to be canceled, this year it happened trackside at the grand opening. Most of the class of 2020 was there, now forever immortalized in the Hall of Fame. And of course, what good is having a bunch of monster trucks sitting around if you can't crush a few cars? Much like the museum itself, the car crushing that took place over opening day was arranged like a history lesson, starting with the old school trucks, which Ryan was very excited about. I see Showtime lined up over there. If I get to see Showtime crush a car today, my life will be complete. And throughout the day, the sessions brought out newer and newer vehicles, ending in a climax of modern freestyle, including another truck Jeff built, War Wagon, which spectacularly got jammed on top of a Jeep. And of course, the truck that started it all, Bigfoot. All in all, it was a day that will go down in monster truck history and a detour that we will never forget.
To find out more about special events like this at the Monster Museum, you want to look no further than monstermuseum.org. And while you're at it, you'll want to follow Jeff's epic and entertaining monster track adventures on his YouTube channel, Jeff Cook Wild Man Adventures. We'd like to thank Jeff and all the awesome people at the Monster Museum for welcoming us in. And that's all for now. We'll see you guys next time on another quick detour.